Ancient Prophecy was released on September 1st, 2009. Notable cards from this set include Blackwing Vayu, the Emblem of Honor, Fishborg Blaster, and of course, Ancient Fairy Dragon. Additionally, a new ban list was also released on September 1st, 2009. Dark Strike Fighter, Card of Safe Return, Monster Reborn, and Crush Card Virus were all now banned from official tournament play. Black Rose Dragon, Blackwing Gale the Whirlwind, Demise, King of Armageddon, Mind Master, Rescue Cat, Summoner Monk, Cold Wave, Mind Control, One for One, Call of the Haunted, and Solemn Judgment were all now limited to one copy each. Chaos Sorcerer, Lone Fire Blossom, Mizuki, and Bottomless Trap Hole were all now semi-limited to two copies per deck. And Breaker the Magical Warrior, DD Warrior Lady, Green Baboon, Defender of the Forest, Rise of the Storm Monarch, Destiny Draw, and Fisher were all now unlimited to three copies. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh's past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in because any Anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. Even know what to say about the last one. I feel like we played fine. We sequenced pretty well. Simo was down to a single monster at the end of game three, and we had a wealth of removal at our disposal. But that's the thing about playing against Alex. Sometimes you can feel invincible, and then he leans in and says those three words everyone longs to hear. Damage. Step. Motherfucker. As a result, we are once again in the shirt of shame and no longer in control of the series. It was a short-lived time atop the standings, but now we have to crawl our way back to first place, and we have to do it in a format that is particularly hostile towards us. After the most recent format, there is a ban list. It takes down a bunch of cards, most notably playmakers in Synchro Cats specifically. Konami was a little uncomfortable with a deck this explosive being this playable, and they neuter it. Though some people do see some success with Synchro Cat in the event immediately following that ban list, it pretty much drops off the face of the earth immediately afterwards. And by October, this is all that's worth playing. Lightsworn is the deck that you all have come to know and love, and I have come to recognize mills out my entire deck every single game. Zombie is a sort of synchro spam deck that you saw the bones of in the mirror that Alex and I played a couple of weeks ago, though they are lacking card of safe return at this point. And Chaos is a deck you may know better as Twilight, a deck that blends the light swarms and really powerful dark monsters in order to facilitate Chaos Sorcerer, which is, of course, still a very powerful individual card. The slice of this pie I'm the most afraid of is Blackwing, and the reason should be pretty clear at this point. We've got two spins. I'm gonna try and get Twilight because I think that'd be a really sick deck to play, but uh, hoping I don't have to jam Light Sworn once again. All right. Sick, first spin. Oh, uh, well, clearly the better, more experienced, more seasoned player won in the previous episode. God, I love Kalut so much. And we have the opportunity to maybe bring out Kalut one more time, but maybe we shouldn't because maybe Joseph will think we're going to do that. And so we should maybe try to one up him by not playing it. But we are now entering a later stage of 2009. The September 2009 ban list is in effect. And we have a wide variety of decks here to choose from as a matter of fact. So we have four different decks. Zombie actually is still playable, even with the banning of Card of Safe Return, surprisingly. The fact that this deck can just synchro off and do so many explosive plays means that it was still a very viable contender at this time. Chaos is another variant that actually started to spawn. We start to see the reintroduction of a card like Chaos Sorcerer, as well as seeing other decks just being able to splice lights and darks in different ways. This is where Twilight kind of comes into play. Although there is Light Sworn on the wheel as well, Twilight is basically Light Sworn, but with a small dark engine. There were also 
some dark focus decks, just playing like a few copies of Raikou and other just good light monsters, just to facilitate some of the chaos plays. Lightsworn is Lightsworn. You've seen this before. Just mill yourself to death and try to kill them as fast as possible. Judgment Dragon. And then of course, Blackwing. You guys saw this in the previous episode. And if you missed the previous episode, you should go ahead and check that out. All these decks are fantastic. Honestly, I'd be happy to play any of them. So let's go ahead and spin the wheel, see what we get. And I think we will decide once we see where the wheel lands. Hmm. Now, Lightsworn is an interesting one. I don't believe I've actually had the chance to play this deck in History of Yu-Gi-Oh! yet. This means I could play Twilight Sworn potentially. I kind of want to roll Zombie again, but at the same time, I also haven't played this deck. I think I'm going to go Lightsworn. So here's the list. We're playing Chris Bowling's first place list from the Austin, Texas SJC event that occurred in October of 2009, and there's a lot to talk about. But before we get into it, let me give you just a quick overview of where the format was. Now, coverage for events around this period were spotty. As we've said before, because Upper Deck was cut out of Yu-Gi-Oh! in its entirety, it's kind of hard to see what was going on at some of these early SJCs under complete Konami control. At this point, there was coverage of events using writers they had poached from metagame, but those writers didn't necessarily have the infrastructure necessary to make really good articles. That's because things like a lack of clarity about what decks were called kind of plagued coverage, and often you see Chaos and Twilight during this period used interchangeably to describe decks that are functionally identical, even if there are differences between those two decks in reality. It's a bit of a nightmare. But uh, as a result, um, we do have a little bit of an understanding about how ubiquitous this deck was. Uh, at Austin, Texas, as part of the coverage, they released the deck archetypes from the previous event in Orlando, Florida. And would it surprise you to know the most popular deck going into this format was Gladiator Beast. That's right, people were still playing Geyserus, and of a 20% Gladiator Beast field, zero of them even made Day 2. <laughs> Shocking. Uh, after that, Lightsworn is extremely popular, as is Blackwing, and then Chaos and Twilight, if you combine them, probably meets somewhere around the 12% mark of the field. This is what we're playing today, and uh, it looks fantastic. Let me walk you through the individual cards. First, we've got three copies of Necro Gardna. This is obviously extremely strong. Three Honest, three Wolf Lightsworn Beast, two Lumina Lightsworn Summoner, two Garoth Lightsworn Warrior, two Celestia, an Arcus, a Raiko, a Lila. A lot of these are just in here for name purposes. Two Shiny Black Sea. That's right, this is the first time a C would become extremely popular. If this card's in your graveyard, when a synchro monster is summoned to your opponent's side of the field, you can banish it to destroy that monster. This effectively shoehorns your opponent into making exactly Stardust Dragon, which loses to pretty much the remainder of the synchro pool. After that, we've got Gore's the Emissary of Darkness, Plague Spreader Zombie, Double Chaos Sorcerer, and Double Judgment Dragon. For spells, we've got Triple Charge, Triple Solar Recharge. I, I'm sorry, this Solar Reach Disc... <sighs> I can only get the first six words of this text. I, I, I don't know if a dueling book is uh, screwing up on me. I, I just can't tell. Two copies of Gold Sarcophagus, A Heavy Storm, A Pot of Avarice, A Burial from the Different Dimension, Torrential Tribute, Double Bottomless Trap Hole, and Double Beckoning Knight. The side is a whole bunch of one-ofs. Very strange. We've got two DD Crow, a Card Trooper, a Jiu-Jitsu Master, a Kaiku, a Twister, Double Lightning Vortex, a Trap Dust Chute, a Dust Tornado, two Royal Oppression, a Dimensional Prison, a Royal Decree, and a Mystical Space Typhoon. In the extra, we've got Armory Arm, Magical Android, Guy Knight, the Force of Earth, uh, Goy Guardian, Arcanite Magician, Tempest Magician, Exaber Urbellum, Ancient Fairy Dragon, Black Rose Dragon, Blackwing Armor Master, Thought Ruler Archfiend, Stardust Dragon, uh, Colossal Fighter, Avenging Knight Parshath, and Red Dragon Archfiend. Now, I specifically want to talk about a couple of these. First up, our monsters are spellcasters, so we have access to uh, this card right here, Arcanite Magician. This is kind of geyserous. A lot of people just don't know this card, aren't familiar with it, but it's extremely, extremely strong. Destroys cards on your opponent's side of the field, something that is not easy to come by. We're also playing Tempest Magician, which kind of burns your opponent occasionally. It does come up. And uh, Armory Arm, the first four-star synchro that was worth considering. So, all that aside, I'm excited to jump into the games, and I have faith that this deck can go the distance against anything 
Simo is packing. Okay, I know this isn't technically Light Sworn. This is Twilight, but we've seen Light Sworn before, and actually we've seen it multiple times. So I wanted to play something a little bit different just to show off the diversity in terms of how these decks have evolved as we enter later periods in Yu-Gi-Oh's history. So we're actually going to be playing Twilight. This is actually a fan favorite archetype, and I want to go ahead and just talk about the card by card and dive right in. So first up, we have Arcus. Arcus is pretty much here just for a name. Its effect could possibly come up, but but really, we just want names for Judgment Dragon in all honesty. Celestia is just an absolute monster. When you tribute a Light Sworn for it, you can just pop cards. It's actually just a very strong monarch for the Light Sworn archetype. Chaos Sorcerer is a great just bomb because we are playing a good hybrid of lights and darks. It's another card that if our plays get stopped, we can drop this and continue following up. To Garoth, this effect like will literally never come up, but it's a name and it's actually not terrible either. One Gores, we don't play many traps in this deck, so we could find ourselves in a situation where this could be relevant. Three Honest, Honest this is actually particularly good because it could contest something like the Black Wings with Kalutes flying around. And so Light Sworn has a Kalut of its own. And honestly, I think Honest is a lot better sometimes. <laughs> Two Judgment Dragon, of course, it is semi-limited. Do you remember that? Two Lumina to resurrect our monsters. One Lila to pop back row. Three Necro Gardener to protect our field. And obviously we want to mill this off of the uh, Light Sworn mill effects. One Plague Spreader. I believe this is limited at this point and only one copy of Raiko. Two Shiny Black Sea. This was actually one of the tech cards that this deck was playing at the time, and this card's really cool. So during either player's turn, when exactly one synchro monster is special summoned to your opponent's side of the field, you can banish this card from your graveyard to target that face-up synchro monster, destroy that target. This means that if Joseph were to ever go into any synchro plays, we can immediately pop it with shiny black sea. This gets around annoying things like Colossal Fighter, maybe an Armor Master, and we're most likely going to mill this off of one of our Light Sworn effects anyway. So this was one of the cards that really made this deck stand out, and there was multiple people playing Twilight variants that were actually main decking this card and of course three of the best light sworn monster light sworn wolf then for the spells one burial three copies of charge of the light brigade two gold sarcophagus heavy storm pot of avarice and three solar recharge and then for the traps two beckoning light this is a way to get our judgment dragons back to our hand if we happen to mill them two bottomless because it's one of the strongest traps at the time and one torrential tribute for the extra deck we have a ton of just very powerful synchros the newest ones that we haven't really seen up till now ancient fairy dragon debuted in ancient prophecy and is a very, very strong card. Maybe not super relevant in this deck specifically, but being able to get an extra special summon is pretty nice. Armory Arm is also a very powerful card as well. I believe that came out of the Hidden Arsenal packs or maybe a other side set product, but very strong level four synchro that actually has a lot of versatility. Avenging Knight Parshath is another card that is relevant because we are playing a light focused deck. And then we also are just playing a ton of other just good generic synchros that you've seen up until this point. And then for the side deck, one card trooper. This is effective a light sworn, except it actually draws you a card when it's destroyed and sent to the graveyard. Two DD Crow to be able to slow down some of these decks. Maybe we need to get rid of an opposing Shining Black Sea. We could also get rid of something like maybe a Judgment Dragon if someone's trying to get it back off of a Beckoning Light. We can get rid of something that a Blizzard will target, just so that way we can just completely thwart their plays. DD Crow has a lot of versatility and is really just an outstanding hand trap. Kaiko the Ghost Destroyer is interesting. It's basically DD Crow on an 1800 attack body. It also prevents things from being banished as well, so that could come up depending on the type of deck that we're playing against. One Legendary Jujutsu Master, I believe this is most likely still in here just for Gladiator Beast because it was still running around even though it wasn't really topping that much at this time. Two Lightning Vortex to wipe the board, a Mystical Space Typhoon, Twister, and Dust Tornado paired with a Royal Decree. This I imagine is specifically for Skill Drain because Skill Drain was a very popular card to stop these Light Sworn focused decks and so having the spell and trap removal here seems pretty good. One copy of Dimensional Prison, maybe this is just to completely throw someone off into thinking that a Light Sworn deck wouldn't actually be playing a card like this. I'm not too sure. Maybe we'll decide it in going first and see what happens. Two Royal Oppression because it's just a fantastic floodgate and one Trap does shoot when we know we are going first. Guys, this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm happy to show off a brand new deck for you guys and I hope to God Joseph isn't playing the same thing. I feel like he might be playing Blackwing to maybe get Retribution for the last episode. We'll have to see. But ladies and gentlemen, it's time to duel. Well, Joseph, here we are once again. Uh, we have now officially left the Teledad era, and uh, you know, after now getting colluded for the first time of many. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I had a feeling you would want to talk about it. Oh so, my God. How, how are you feeling going into this episode? So, more decks to choose from. Uh, actually, you know, some pretty interesting options as well. How are you feeling? More decks to choose from for sure, but I have a pretty sneaking suspicion about what you spent your rolls trying to do. <laughs> 
I think if you had, about. I think if you had the option to about. collude me every day from now until the heat death of the universe, you would take it in a heartbeat, buddy. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. I guess we could just get into it and see if your uh, if your suspicions are true. Then uh, I've got the rock paper scissor generator up. So how many refreshes are we doing, buddy? All right, <laughs> let me get two refreshes, one for each collude glued to your fucking hand. I don't know if that counts. I'm going to refresh that one more time. Okay, there we go. Uh, it was scissors, but I wasn't sure if the first refresh, like, moved the page down or if it actually refreshed. So I might have actually won this, but, you know, I'll, I'll give you one after the colluding. Go wow. ahead, buddy. You could pick. This is a momentous day. I believe this is Isn't it? the first time the RPS generator has ever given me a, a no, win. No, <laughs> it's given it to you before. Get out of here. 42.15. That's interesting because that's the same amount of cards i'm playing i hope this is oh. a mirror i'll go uh -oh. first well i guess we'll find out good luck buddy let's see what you're on <laughs> yeah good luck to you too i'll draw for turn wow that's really not what i wanted to see this is like wow let me guess your hand is so good that you have choice paralysis and you actually don't know how to advance yourself. I mean, there's there's paralysis of some kind. Wow, I am <laughs> dumbfounded. Like, like a, Please tell me it's just triple wolf. A, that would be the a best. A bottom case five hand for this deck for sure. <laughs> Passing, really? We'll be fine. Okay, it, it's all well, good. I mean, uh, <clears throat> what are you gonna fucking OTK me? Unless you're on Blackwing, I think I'm fine. Let's start with a solar recharge. Oh. A pitch a wolf. Nice wolf, idiot. Did you draw that for turn? <laughs> uh, no, actually, it was in my hand. But at least compared to your hand, I can do something with mine. Okay, now, 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 before you, before you resolve this card, remember you have to send the top two cards of your deck to the graveyard. Hey, I, know, I know you've I've had some trouble with that. I've never played this deck before. You've had some trouble with that before. Ooh, a JD, that's good to see. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, if only we were actually able to do something else. Okay, uh, next up we'll charge. Oh Jesus I think that's Christ. pretty good. Yep, that's fine. Yep, so we're getting a mill three. Ah, three oh, good well, ones. there go some more good ones. Yeah. Three good ones. Uh, I think I'm gonna go for a Garroth here. Uh, we're gonna recharge again. Jesus we're pitch the Garroth. Christ. Yeah, that's fine. Keep milling, buddy. Fantastic. Yep, keep milling. Eventually, we'll get something. We got the Necrogardener. That right. is something. Uh, I'm going to bring out Illumina. That's fine. I'm going to trigger her effect. I'm going to pitch this Necrogardener. I actually think I want Garroth here. Wolf is bigger, but I have the potential to actually get some cards if I'm lucky with the Garroth. So I kind of want to try for that, actually. Now, the question is, you didn't do anything, which is still kind of scary. I'll just go to battle. Sure. Let's hit for 1,000 yep. and 1850. All right, you sniffed it out, buddy. Gore's time. Okay, figured as much. So you will get an 1850 token All right, in uh, the second main phase. To signify the attack on this token, I'm going to put 1850 counters on it, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. I don't know how that's going to work, but be my guess. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just go for it. You just uh, take the rest of your turn. Perfect. Sounds like a plan. Uh, main two. Yeah, you know what? We'll go for it. Uh, I'm going to bring out Chaos Sork. I figured you might be holding a Sork. That's a pretty uh, excellent use of it. Yeah, it's it sucks because I have to get rid of a Necrogarna to summon it. I'll banish your Gores. Okay, sounds good. And then I think I will proceed to end phase, and we're going to mill uh, a total of three here, and then potentially two more if we get lucky. So let's see. Uh, there's the Celestia. Cool. So then I get to trigger the Garroth. I get to mill two, then draw one more. All right. No, actually. No, no, no. Oh, Garroth, sure Garroth triggers uh, after the Lumina's resolved, sending two. And if Garroth mills like If Garroth gets it. Yeah. Okay. I messed this up in progression too. So. All yeah. right. Well, now you know I don't have Gore. So unfortunately, Garroth whips. Man, this card sucks. Go ahead. Uh, unfortunately, I only got to 50 here. All right. Stand by main. You can keep going. I'm thinking about it. Uh, instead, I'm going to charge the Light Brigade. Okay, so we'll begin by milling three. Oh, there's, well, a, JD. there's a JD and an Honest. Feel pretty good about that. All right, I think I'm going to grab a Lumina here. Lumina seems like a good choice. Sure. Uh, we'll go for another one. Bottom five hand here for sure. I just wanted Gores. Uh, I know you did. Hey, <laughs> oh, hit the wolf. Go. There you go. That's a nice one. Both JD's gone though. Happy to see that. Cool. Uh, you know what's going to be cooler? Uh, we're going to tribute summon for a Celestia. Fire it off, baby. Did you uh, search for the charge? <laughs> why would I search for the charge? I don't understand. What's? Why would I want to search for the charge? <laughs> you either? were just so excited to bring out the Celestia. <laughs> well, now that I know that I'm not going to be able to JD because they're all milled, it's not that big of a deal, but let's go for our Celestia here. Okay, mill another four. Ooh, cool. Wow, that's an interesting one. I am going to target Chaos Sorcerer and Garroth Lightsworn Warrior. 
You know, I hit the token. I think you should hit the token. I'm thinking about it. You've got one Necro Garden Engrave because you had to banish the other one for your monster. Uh, let's go to battle phase. I'll attack into your Lumina with my token. I will honest. Okay. Stuff. That is not the worst thing in the world. Uh, to the grave goes my token. And then yep. I will attack with Celestia. Five in hand. You've already normaled. I know you have Lila. Mm -hmm. You know I have Lila and else? Lumina. Lumina was the other one. Right. Okay. So Lila, Lumina, three other cards. Okay. That's fine. So you're taking 550, right? Oh my god! I haven't read Honest! <laughs> well, I'm just dead here then. Well, son of a bitch. I'm losing to not reading Honest. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, you're not dead necessarily. No, I'm dead, you know. uh, I'll heavy storm you, then you might be dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Bottomless. Uh, trigger Lumina. I'll pitch this wolf in my hand. Uh, I actually don't know if I can kill you, to be honest. Oh, the comments are going to love this one. <laughs> oh, I bet they are. I bet they are. I honestly, I thought you knew and you were trying to see if I would take the bait because I was thinking about necro gardening. Um, but, I mean, if you had it, you had it. So I, I rolled the dice. Uh, let's bring out... God, this kind of sucks. Uh, let's bring out a Garoth again. Yeah, we'll bring Garoth out again. Uh, so this will be 2850. Yep. Wolf, I mean, yeah, I can't lethal you either way, so I might as well try to get an extra card out of it. Okay, uh, I'll go to battle. 1,000, 1850, cool. Uh, main two, I'll set. End phase, we're gonna mill three. Let's see if we can actually get lucky here. Okay, there's, there's one. Come on, Garoth. Come on, Garoth. Oh, oh came in clutch. All right, go ahead, buddy. Stand by main. Um, All good. Lumina. Lumina's fine. Declare. I'm going to pitch Plagues. Uh, I'm going to target the wolf. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Plague Spreader's pretty good. He's okay. I wish he was a little bit better. I will go to combat here. Lumina into Lumina. Trading Luminas. Yeah, that's fine. Wolf into Garrow. I will Necro Garden out here. Second main, set one, and I'm going to pass turn here. Sure. I will draw. Anything on standby? No. Okay. Main one. The graveyard's getting a little bit heavy here. You have a plague spreader. Okay. I will tribute Garroth for Celestia. Jesus. Any response? No, I'm I'm good. Okay. Uh we'll mill four and we'll target your two cards. I'll chain beckoning light. Sure. So I'm going to send Lila and Wolf to grab back JD and Honest. Uh, battle? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Should have read Honest. End of the turn. Until the end <laughs> of the turn. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it it happens to everyone once and then never again. Oh, this one may yeah. be happening to me a couple of times here. Uh, I'm going to go for Charge of the Light Brigade. To be fair, I think this makes up for the time that I uh, forgot to Necro Garden when I could have killed you. Pretty so similar. Pretty, pretty similar. <laughs> well, shoot. Uh, this is not really what I wanted to see. I'm going to grab a wolf to hand. Sure. Could you imagine? <laughs> I'm not going to grab a wolf to hand. <laughs> you could grab wolf and just pitch it for solar recharge. I uh, really did like your setup. I think I'm going to get Garroth. I'm going to normal summon Lumina. Mm -hmm. I'm going to trigger Lumina, pitching a Garroth. I'm going to summon the Garroth. Because you have Arcus and Grave, you can do that. Yep. And I'll proceed to end step, uh, trigger the effect of Lumina. See how lucky you get. No. Nope. Okay. And then the effect of Garroth. Miss. Easy. Oh, and it's a wolf. Easy. Oh, come on. Easiest play of my life. All right, go ahead, buddy. Oh, that's good. All right, I will draw. Yep. The main one. Yep. Uh, nothing else like to worry about aside from a few light sworn names, I guess. It's not the end of the world. Okay, I'll start with a gold start. Let's get rid of a. I think I'm gonna get rid of a solar recharge here. Let's bring out a Garoth of my own. Uh, battle, let's hit into Honest. You actually have first crack at Honest if you would like to. <laughs> All right, I, I will Honest. Okay, so I'll take a thousand here. Figured it was worth the shot. And, hey, buddy, I think I'm just passing. Go ahead. All right, I'll draw for turn. Uh, this is a sure. ton of damage. I've got some Swarns I could summon. Imagine the Arcus on my side of the field. Let's just say that there's a reason I uh, solar, I banish Solar Recharge for the Gold Star. Yeah, I, I think I may be, uh, I may understand that reason. Uh, pretty well. Go for Lumina. 
Pitching solar Hot. recharge and targeting Arcus. Get Arcus out. That gives you considerable amount. Was that 2850, 4850, 4950? I'll crow it. All right. Well, I tried my hardest. Let's go to combat. All right. So uh, I imagine there's a Gores, but we'll order it in the right way. Um, this is why you attack in the proper order. <laughs> <laughs> and you are correct. There is a Gors here. Gors comes. I get a 2100 attack token. Second main. And you may proceed to Chaos Sork me. Uh, no, I'm just going to go to the end phase. We'll trigger uh, the Lumina here. I found, okay. I, I found the Chaos Sork, buddy. And then the Gara. You did find it. Now, this is where you monster reincarnation. Wow! How am I so good at you here, dude? Oh my it's god. Just, it's just impossible. So good. I, I guess my hubris was getting the better of me because I had that crow turn one and I was just completely overlooking the fact that I had it because I could have <laughs> stopped the Garoth from coming out. And that probably would have maybe saved me from possibly winning the game here. Okay. I'll draw. Jesus Christ. That's awful. Main one. Holy crap. What are we going to do about this? I'll go to battle. I'm going to hit into Lumina. Uh, I'll take 850. You will take 1100. You, the token is 21 from the wolf. There you go. There we go. And I guess we'll hit over Garoth. Yeah, that's fine. 850. Yeah. Main two, I'm going to set one and I'm going to pass it over to you. Draw for turn, stand by main. And uh, hoping this is uh, the end of the game here. Uh, I'm going to vortex. Gross. There's the third wolf. All right. So these are gone. I drew the wolf off of the wolf set. <laughs> oh, fantastic. That's even that's better. Very funny. Oh, I didn't even need to do that. JD. Shit. Yep. Effect. Nuke in the board, huh? I am. Do you have a response? I do not. I'll chain beckoning light. Gross. Okay. Uh, I'm going to grab Lumina Honest. Seems pretty good. Uh, it's a Necro Gardener, though, okay. so I am not dead here. Uh, you are, right? I just normal the Lumina. I trigger the effect. Yeah, now I'm dead here. And I bring back <laughs> the... Yeah, you can. Joseph, this has just been a weird, weird set. Uh, from the fact that we were already playing the mirror match to, you know, these, these games have just been odd, <laughs> to say the least. I guess I would say two things. Uh, one, you want to re-record this one after, and two, uh, what do you mean mirror match? I'm on Blackwing, dude. I've just had weird hands. You know, you understand how it is. Yeah, of course. All right, good luck, buddy. Uh, yeah, yeah, good I luck will too. draw for turn, and oh my god. I got a weird I'm one. I'm going to set one in pass. <laughs> I got a very <laughs> weird one. Stand by main. Uh, I will normal summon Lumina. Do you have a response? You're good. Idiot. I'll attack directly for a thousand. Perfect. You want to collute that? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, God. Could you imagine Light Sworn collute? Wow, that would honestly be a crazy card. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's Wild. mill three here. Yeah. Oh, mill 34, maybe. <laughs> the mill 34. Yeah, that would be. That would Woo, be we got one. Okay. Thank you, Arcus. Maybe next turn we can do something. All right, we'll draw. Oh my God, it just keeps getting better and better, doesn't it? Uh, main one. Yep. Pass. This is looking good. I'm liking the way this looks. Yeah, you you should. You should. All right. I, so I think uh, game one's coming back to bite me in the ass now. I imagine there's probably some kind of crazy ass sweeper, but uh, I don't know. Bait it out. That, that, that sounds terrible. That sounds really bad. All right. Uh, I'm going to activate the effect of Lumina pitching. Oh, God. My whole hand is so very bad. Um, I'm Not gonna as bad as Arcus. I'm going to but... pitch Garoth, if that's okay. And I'm going to target You're going to target the Garoth? Yeah. Uh, I'll crow this. Okay. I figured there was like maybe a crow. That's better than a great number of things. I will tribute the Lumina for a Celestia, if that's okay. Yeah. Are you going to activate the... Oh, well, that answers my question. Yes. Uh, so you will mill for target up to two. Oh, that seems pretty good. I'll and then I will that. bottomless here. Okay, sick. That's... Well, the plank spreader is nice, at least. Well, it'd be nice if I had a monster. Would be. Maybe I should have just kept attacking. You're good. <laughs> you know, you had to bait the stuff out eventually. I'll draw. Let's bring out a Garoth. I will go to battle and hit for 1850. Ow. That will be the end of my turn. Stand by me. There's no way that Goyo take your Garoth is good, right? There's just like never <laughs> any scenario in which that's good whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, it's not like the end of the world, I guess. It sounds pretty bad. I, I'm just being It sounds pretty bad. I'm not going to lie. It sounds pretty bad. Imagine if you like honest me. How, how painful would that be? I mean, the fact that I've done almost nothing for three turns could indicate that I have an honest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Wow, this is so bad. I'm actually going to banish the Plague Spreader for cost. Uh, I'm going to go Plagues plus uh, JD, and we're going to go Chaos into Orc. Chaos Orc. 
Sure. And I'll go to battle. And then psych main phase two, we're just going to uh, get that motherfucker out of here. Yeah, I figure you weren't going to risk that. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Chaos Sork is a pretty good card. Three in hand. I don't believe I know any of them. I'm going to pass. Okay. I mean, if you have gores, you have gores. I mean, what the hell am I going to do about it? Uh, combat. We. I'll take the 23. Second man. Behold, another pass from me. <laughs> This is I'll good. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a Oh great my god. Okay. All right. That's what we needed. This is going to give away what's going on here. I'm going to solar recharge pitching wolf. Yeah, well, I figured there'd be one of them. Sure. We'll draw two. We'll mill two. Okay. okay. Does shoot D to crow. I'm going to normal summon Lumina. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. Pitch another wolf okay. and I'll target wolf. <laughs> That's fine. I want to do this. I'm going to go to battle. I'm going to attack with wolf. No response. I will honest. Sure. I'll take 21 here. And then 1,000 from Lumina, if you'll allow it. Yep. I'll go to main two, and I think I'm just going to go to my end phase and mill for Lumina here. Oh, I needed you go. not to get a Gardner. Right, I right you on time. A Thank you, Necrogardna. Go ahead. Okay, this one's a thinker. Ugh, I have so many lines, and none of them are fantastic, uh, but some of them are- Are they as good as having double wolf in your hand? They're not that good. Jeez. It's a tense game. This is like like one false move, and it's it's going to go very quickly. <laughs> I'm going to Vortex here. Cost. Shiny Black Sea. Yeah, sure. All right, let's normal summon Lumina. Okay, now it's your turn. Am I just hoping I hit something? I have... I'm 15 cards in. I've seen zero Wolves, zero Necro Gardeners. Yeah, okay, we are going to use Lumina. I'm going to send Honest. We're going to bring back uh, Arcus. Okay combat i'll take 12 i'll take a thousand uh i'll go to end phase and mill five all right let's see if you get them there's a necro there's a gardener and, and a wolf, wolf. okay it's not bad we'll draw uh any standby no okay just want to make sure uh let's charge to oh get off the top oh you're off so good at Yu-Gi-Oh. yeah another and another gardener, gardener wow. too it's pretty good that's all something right. with the charge i think lumina's the ad here sure so we'll grab that i'm gonna bring out this lumina and uh i will Pitch this Garoth. I'll go for a wolf. I just realized something. Hmm. You can't summon that wolf. Why? I've got an Arcus on the field. Oh, now it's my turn to not read cards. Woo, okay. we did it, folks. <laughs> well, th admittedly, uh, this is an effect that is ridiculous. Whereas the effect that I forgot is one that every Yu-Gi-Oh player should know. It was the Garoth pitch, right? Yeah, so then I can't even use the effect, right? Gareth comes back to hand. Targeting is part of the cost, so yeah, you're right. Right, so, okay. What a well, strange effect on this card, because- Yeah, it's the fact that it it's it anywhere. Says anywhere. If it was just yeah. on the field, like, that's like, that's what I've always assumed with Arcus, but the fact that it's anywhere- What a strange little card. Uh, I would have done something completely differently in that case, so now I'm probably boned. Uh, what do we do now? I think we are both in this just weird uh, zone where we're like, I don't want to do shit, <laughs> but my life points are at five. Okay, I'm going to banish a light and a dark for a chaos sork. You want to do something with Pryo? Considering I can't target any of your light swords, I would not. All right, I'll just bottomless that. Shit. Well, there goes that. It's Schrodinger's Honest. Go to battle. Yeah. I'll crash. Damage step. You got it? No, I don't. <laughs> Do you got it? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> All right. Fun game, everyone. Yep. Great game. Uh, go ahead. Oh, you are dead on board unless you use... Okay, right. I'll draw for turn. Stand by main. Remember that the time you did actions, you know, that that's what got you into more trouble. I know. So. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> this is a little sussy, uh, but I am going to summon JD. Was JD. I had a feeling. Yeah. No, you, you had it right. Um... <sighs> Then I'm going to normal, honest. Oh, and you top deck the honest, okay. <laughs> Combat. Uh, so we're gonna go wolf, or we'll go JD first is how I have to do this, I think. Yeah, because that plays around gores. I mean, nothing so. really plays around gores, but yeah. Well, it does, yeah, because if I, I can't gores you uh, on this JD specifically. So I have to forcibly use Necrogardner here. Uh, we're gonna go honest. Then we're gonna try with wolf. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> It all came down to that Arcus. So I had so I had my own JD. I figured. I was like, I'm not JD till he JDs. So I had a feeling that your back row was either bottomless or uh, torrential. I was trying to bait that first and then bring out JD. Mm -hmm. And so the issue was I didn't have four Light Swords in Grave unless I pitched for Lumina specifically because I only have Lumina, Wolf, Celestia in Grave. Are you ready so for me to- So I needed to get a- You ready for me huh? to ruin your day? Sure. Uh, Check your grave, buddy.
what what am I what? There's three names. There's another Necro Gardener. You weren't dead to this board. Yeah, I was. I was still dead. Well, because I go with Wolf, you negate Wolf. I go with Arcus, you go to 300. The point of this turn wasn't to kill you, it was to put you out of JD range. Oh, oh, fantastic. Okay, well, you know, this is deserved. This is deserved. We, man, we this didn't read gonna... shit today. No, <laughs> we did not. No, and after, you know, you think I would have learned my lesson? Uh, I knew I had one Necro in Grave. I must have missed seeing the second one. Just going, it must have just been off of the turn. mills. It was long turns, man. This, yeah. Jesus. All right, this this was an episode. This I, The comments are going to roast both of us equally. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. everyone. Uh, but uh, I, I do appreciate your continued <laughs> patronage and if you could just click the ad one more time i'd really i'd really like one that. more time uh you know i am glad we got to Gross. show off this deck i imagine we're both playing yeah. the deck that won the october sjc yep this deck is sick i think that uh twilight is one of the coolest uh archetypes that's ever really been playable in any sort of meta capacity and i'm uh i'm really happy that we got to kind of showcase the power of what it does it's functionally just light sworn except uh, with the understanding that DD Crow is one of the best cards in the format, uh, Necro Gardena is such a sick mill. Like, it's incomprehensible what this deck is allowed to do with an extra turn. Oh my god. And Chaos Sorcerer making his triumphant return to the format as well. Yeah. What a killer Absolutely. of a card. Chaos Sorcerer just being this extra bomb you can drop to possibly bait out interruption to be able to just like, for it, it's just, it's an all around just all star. And especially because you can, under most circumstances, just be able to summon it so easily, just since you can load the graveyard up so quickly. Uh, so my opening hand this game was Chaos Sork, JD, Wolf, Wolf, Lumina. And Jesus then at some point, Christ. at some point I drew the third wolf as well. Awesome. That's uh, amazing. Yeah. So that's why I wasn't doing much the first few turns of this game. And then I drew that solar recharge and thought I was going to be back in it. Yeah. So that, that turn, what I was thinking was doing was grabbing uh, Lila instead to force your back row. Uh, but then if it was bottomless specifically, that still wouldn't put another name in grave. So I had to go for Lumina to try to do that instead. But then if I had read Arcus, I could have just normal summoned this Garroth, attacked into your wolf, and then I would have had four names for JD. Uh, uh, oh, so then Garoth I could have like... To, uh to just uh, send himself in and die. Correct, just to, just to get another name in Grave because I was just so desperate to get the fourth name in Grave. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and yeah, even if I stayed alive, I couldn't have JD'd you because I would have been on 300 life. I don't even think I could have realistic because like I could go JD into Arcus for 18. You would have been to 1250. What would my draw for turn have been? Oh, that's not actually, a bad that, one. That's a pretty good no, it one. Wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been in Grave, though. Uh, and all a, I had is a Garoth Wolf. So I don't think I could have killed you. I think, I mean, I could have, like, crashed JDs. But no, I feel, I still think you won this, even if I did realize the Necro Gardener. A completely different game, you know. You go If you um deal with the Arcus by doing the Garoth thing, and then you JD the board, then I have to JD in response. Uh, I have to Necro probably to stay alive, or at least at enough health that I can JD on the Crackback. And then you've got a couple of turns to find stuff because we've got Necro Gardeners in the grave. It's just a right. a strange, right. different game. But uh, yeah, these, no, absolutely. I, I still think you got it. These games were so explosive. Oh my God, they yeah. turned on a dime. <laughs> I mean, it's it's shocking to think in a format that had decks that just passed so often in terms of like a Dark Arm Dragon just going for one huge turn. There were decks that were yep. like, okay, my turn one play is a attack position Lumina, Garroth, um, and then uh, good luck to you. Uh, I'm going to mill five yeah. cards and draw two. And it's like, it's funny because in this point in time, that was actually okay. You know, yeah. there were instances where you might just die immediately, but the ever looming threat of gores made it so that that wasn't guaranteed, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you hit a Necro Gardener off of that mill five with the Lumina Garroth opening, and then you were for sure not going to die that turn unless your opponent like crowed the Necro Gardener or this deck actually side decked Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer, which I thought was an interesting piece of tech yeah. for this, just to stop the Necro Gardeners to be able to deplete the graveyard of the uh, of the uh, Light Sworn names or the Necro Gardeners as well. Just a neat card. And I, uh, it didn't come up, but I do so want to cool. ask, how did you board? Did you uh, did you keep in Gores? I did keep in Gores. I didn't see it this game, but yeah. I felt that Gores is just like in these instances where my hand was just completely bricky. I mean, it was like fine. It, it would have been a, guy. a wall, but yeah, it would have been OK. But I, it was it's a tough call, right? Because unless you're just 
your board is just completely empty. It, it's just terrible, right? I ended up for this game because I was going first. I brought in some of the traps. I brought in like dimensional prison just for fun mm -hmm. because dimensional prison can stop like an honest sort of attack, right? Right. And dimensional prison is like the last card you would expect. I was actually reading some of Chris's uh, feature matches and he did side in D prison for like the Twilight Mirror. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. So I figured I'd give it a shot even though it never came up. I got to uh, ask I sided you. In you saw Dust Shoot too, but yeah. you can ask me what. Did you board into Royal Oppression? I did not board into Oppression. Me neither. Uh, I did not I, have the balls I, for it. <laughs> I, was like, no I did way. neither. Like, Oppression has the just potential to go very wrong very quickly. Uh, last game, when you went first, I boarded in all of the spell and trap removal in case you did board in Oppression. <laughs> yeah, I'm on like Twisters post board. I'm like, Jesus right. Christ, I'm not yep. losing to this card. Oh, Twister, MST, Dust Tornado, Heavy Storm, I think. And then Lila on top of it can. Uh, break it too so uh what a just a weird just a weird set what a weird strange set. set i i i am happy we got to show off the deck though um i am too i know there are some uh definitely some people who wanted to see twilight in the comments and uh i will say uh i i don't think it ever comes back uh, i don't think there's ever a time in Yu-Gi-Oh that twilight is like playable again we get decks that like are playing darks and lights in the future uh because those right. are like the most powerful cards in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh, but nothing sure. even approaching this until really like even the grass era of Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I think we'll maybe touch on those when we get there, but yeah. you know, for now, I think it's just another one in the books. And surprisingly, this format of Blackwing, Twilight Sworn, uh, I guess regular Light Sworn 2, and I don't remember what the fourth deck is now. I guess Chaos. I don't know. Something like that. This format lasts for, actually, we were, you and I were surprised, like several months. It's mm -hmm. just these four decks at the top and nothing else. There was maybe like a Glad that topped here and there until we get to like Edison format, yeah. right? Which is one of the most like, so it's like the second most popular fan favorite format that exists. And so I think a lot of people are going to be excited for that one. We may even spend a few episodes there because there's a lot to explore. Yeah. Uh, let us know what you want to see us try out in uh, Edison. I promise that we'll pilot it better than we piloted today. I will at least read. <laughs> honest before we start i'm those not games. guaranteeing that <laughs> oh no but um i'm i'm super excited for those uh and honestly i don't hate this format either you know we've been in a one deck format for long enough i am more than happy to yeah. deal with four of them. and you're happy to not see collude in any capacity as well uh, i think collude will be around so guys that's going to be the end of this episode of the history of Yu-Gi-Oh. we have to shout out our patrons as always so big shouts to shout 1317 show tagging to shot jr joshua schley cameron smith and gayoko tim 00 x3 ike iron fang pony Sarki and Musa, Michael Dente, Part 2, Dan the Man, Hoban, Synchro Guy, Ole, Mystic Walk, Sylvia Wild, Din Unitai Show, Draconic, Dolly Wop, Jarvis Martin, Logan Thomas, Peter Gregory, Thomas Nelson, Jordan Coons, Kelvin, Colty, Iron Bladesman, Pure Ace, Jesse Wood, True Nerd, Gazin, Brother Paul, Chris Hood, Farfa Gives Gage Bad Advice, Lumpy, Nehru Celeste, David Liu, Rockley 325, Lane Rogers, Silent Agent 216, I Side in Grand Maju and Salad, Sky Rose, Dylan Henter, Yusuf Aslan 05, Garthox DOW, John Two Base, Apathy Astro, Brody Eastwood, Dace Zier, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Give Me Speedroid or Give Me Death, Shane Corin, and TC Gaming. Thank you so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.